Hello, my name is Nicholas Michael Bashur. I was born in Syria. I moved to the United States when I was 13 in 1999. I graduated from the uh, Wayne State University from Detroit, Michigan in 2009 with a degree in biology and a degree in uh, journalism. I did three, three years of neuroscience research at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda. And when I was there, I got to interact with a lot of international scientists. And I started to think, you know, I'm really curious about where um, international scientists um, come from, from around the world, you know, are they coming from Europe, are they coming from Asia, what motivates them to come to the United States. And um, I started to become curious about international cooperation in science and science diplomacy. And I went online and I started to uh, be uh, curious about where can I go to study uh, international science diplomacy. And I came across the, uh, the uh, Fulbright Schumann program and I was like, wow, this is exactly what I want to do. And I was fortunate in that I sent an email randomly to the uh, Fulbright uh, Belgium advisor and who was very, grace very gracefully replied to me. And uh, fast forward, one year later, and I am now in Belgium and uh, studying European science policy. So when I first uh, was designing my uh, research project to study European science policy, I thought to myself, where do I want to go to see how science in Europe is done? And Belgium was a very, very natural location because Brussels is the capital of the European Union. All the science policy is designed in Belgium. And I just happen to be in a very fortunate time because right now is when the next uh, iteration of science funding in Europe known as Horizon 2020 is being decided in the European Parliament, in the European Commission. So to have the chance to be right in the heart of Brussels when all of these de interesting debates are taking place was, was fantastic. And, and, and I remember first getting my letter in the mail from, from Fulbright uh, Belgium saying, you have been accepted into the program and I was like, wow, of all the years to be doing this, I get to be in Belgium right at the time when they were deciding the most important funding package for the next seven years in European science funding. And so um, I picked Belgium just because it just came naturally. Now the one thing about the Fulbright Schumann program is that you get to pick two or more European countries. And so I was thinking, hmm, where do I want to go besides Belgium to study European science. And I thought to myself, well, I love Germany and a lot of science um, uh, institutions are in Berlin, so why not go to Berlin? And uh, I, I put that in as a part of my project and I collaborated with uh, uh, an institution in Berlin that studies science, uh, um, science policy and science uh, funding programs and uh, how scientists in Europe are doing. And um, I sent them an, an email saying, I would like to work with you if I get this grant. And they were like, sure, this is exactly what we do. And they wrote me a letter. Um, because when you're a Fulbright Schumann, you have to collaborate with a host institution. And they have to say, if you get the grant, we will host you at our location. And they did that for me. And now uh, that's why in January, I will be off to Berlin to uh, live and do work there. Before I started to think about applying for the Fulbright program, I was living in Washington DC and I was interacting with a lot of international people, a lot of people who have done the Fulbright and they were telling me their stories. They were saying, I lived in this country for many years and I did a study abroad for this many years before I applied for the Fulbright and I felt a little bit intimidated because I was just this you know, Syrian American who just moved from Syria to Detroit, did my uh, time there, then moved to DC. I didn't have a lot of international experience and I felt, was I right for the Fulbright program? And then I, I, I was listening to a podcast um, from the Fulbright inaugural in, uh, lecture in inter international relations at uh, University of Oxford in, uh, in England. And they were saying that um, Senator Fulbright himself thought of himself as somebody who wasn't very internationally aware before, his, before he first went abroad to Oxford. And I'm thinking, if Senator Fulbright was this person who didn't have any much international experience before he went abroad and his experience of being abroad caused him to become the man he is, then I obviously am just as qualified to go abroad and do this. So I, I was no longer intimidated. I was like, I'm going to do this. Yes, I didn't have a lot of abroad experience, but this is the perfect opportunity for me to go abroad. So I started emailing people. I was, uh, it's very important to be proactive, to start throwing nets out to say, oh, this is what I want to do. These are the people who are doing what I want to do. I'm going to contact them and see if they would like to work with me. I talked to a lot of different people, and then there were a few who said, yes, we would like to work with you. 
I um, wrote my essay, I wrote my project proposal, I, I looked really deep inside myself and I said, what do I really want to get out of this? And I think if you really, really look inside yourself and you, you ask yourself, what does this international experience will provide me that any other experience will not, right? And so I did that for myself and, I, and that's what I designed my project around. And by doing that, I, I, I wrote my project and a couple of months later, I got my acceptance letter and a couple of months after that, I, now I'm here and I'm getting to meet amazing people and it's just, it's very exciting and learning about cultures and learning about policy and learning about a country and, and a region and a continent and a world and I'm just very happy to be here.